Hey, welcome to Weld.com, home of TIG time. Hi, I'm Mr. TIG, and uh, we have a segment for you this time that's uh, kind of interesting. Uh, first of all, I had an individual email us, and then write us, and then call us, and he said he's got some filler material that is excellent for welding cast iron. Well, my ears perked up because welding cast iron is just nasty. It's tough. Uh, so I'm going to describe this as a welding wire. It's called Easy Weld TIG wire. Never used it, so I had to go out and get a cast iron piece. And so I went out, uh, shouted out to Larry, and Larry brought me a broken cast iron piece. And so I have to identify it first. And so if, if you're looking at cast iron and you're thinking about welding, I want you to know that it's about a 50% chance of success. That's all you've got. So it's 50-50 right off the bat. Now, cast typically has about 2% carbon in it. The rest of it is a combination of iron and trash elements. And, you know, that's why some of these weld great. Some of them don't weld well at all. So one thing you want to do is you want to test this out. This is pretty heavy, so I have a feeling that it's got a lot of iron in it. And just to make sure, I'm going to check with a magnet. And sure enough, it's magnetic. Yeah, look, looking at the brake, because it's got 2% carbon in it, and this is the tough part, it doesn't have a lot of elongation. So what happens is that when you weld and the weld shrinks, it cracks. It has nowhere to go, so it cracks, and typically right down the middle. Now, that can be compensated several ways, and there's all kinds of techniques out there. There's preheating, uh, there's brazing, there's all kinds of alloys that have been tried. There's a nirod. I don't know what's in this. This is a secret or a mystery, so uh, I'm hoping it turns out well. Now, what I've done is I've already pre-tacked it in a couple of spots, and I called up the gentleman that owns this wire. He advised me I don't have to preheat. And that's unusual in itself. So the fact that I don't have to preheat cast iron, I'm, I'm all for it. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to get my gear on. I'm going to set my machine on DC negative, and uh, I'll show you how I have my TIG torch set up. So give me a few seconds. Okay, I've got the uh, the machine is turned on. I'm using a square wave 175. 175 amps is all it'll go, but I'm only going to use 100 amps of that. So I've got a 1 16th tungsten in here. I'm using that laser tungsten uh, pointed, so DC negative, and I've got a gas lens in here, and of course I've got my favorite Flex 17 torch. That's a CK17 Flex torch is the, uh, the term. Anyway, you can position this any way you want. I'm going to weld this in a couple of places. I'm not just going to make one weld all the way up to the top. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld maybe an inch here, inch here, and kind of skip around just to kind of relieve the stresses a little bit. Using argon gas, 100%. Now this filler material, I'm not 100% sure how clean it is. I'm not really sure what it is. But what I like to do is I like to do a, a wipe, and I've already doused this a little bit in acetone. And so I kind of de-smut it. You can see, you can see that there's black marks on here. Very common. That's from drawing the rod. But uh, it's good to get it off just before you weld. So I want to make sure that I get this acetone out of here because uh, very flammable. Okay, I'm going to start off and I'm going to weld about one inch. Okay, initiate the arc, kind of creep up on the puddle. I'm adding this filler material and it uh, actually seems to be flowing out pretty nicely. Yeah, there's a little trash in this material, but it, you can always expect that. You can see it kind of float to the top. When you get to a well termination, add a little extra filler, because it'll try to crack. Okay. 
Okay, I'm going to go to the top here so I can try to equalize a few of these stresses. And so, always add filler. Yeah, you can tell this is a cast iron just by how it melts. A little bit sluggish. You can see it's uh, impregnated with oil, um, so I'm going to let this clean out just a little bit. Uh, if it gets any worse than this, I'm going to get some kind of a vent fan, but uh, it's, it's cleaning out. It's actually welding up pretty nice. Okay, I'm just resuming the first weld. Like I said, I'm going to skip around a little bit. My wells are only about an inch long at best. Again, always, always add filler when you start your arc and when you get to the end of your arc. Yeah, there's a lot of trash floating to the top, so I'm going to <clears throat> I'm gonna let it uh, let it cool off a little bit. Reposition myself. Okay, I'm going to try welding right here. Okay, now we're going to let this thing cool down, and uh, that's when we're going to find out how well the wire works. Now, the thing about cast iron is there are certain areas that I was welding, and you can see trash coming out. Uh, every, every casting is different, uh, and I don't care what rod. If it's too trashy, it's not going to weld, and it'll probably crack. So right now, I've welded up uh, the part. I could hear pinging and cracking going on. I didn't preheat this, so we're going to see what happens when it cools off. But right now, it's showing pretty good success. So uh, we'll give it about uh, 10 minutes, come back to you, and, and see if it cooled off and cracked. 
Okay, now we finished welding, and then uh, we let this thing cool down on its own, just to air cool for about 30 minutes. So I'm now to a point where it's just warm. I can put my hands on it. So let's inspect it and see exactly what this filler did or didn't do. And one of the things that I look for is look right down the center of the weld to see if you see any cracking whatsoever. And I don't, I don't see any cracking. And the other thing is I look at the edge of the weld and kind of scrape because sometimes the metal tries to etch out. Well, this filler wetted out very nicely. Now I did have one spot up here where there's a little bubble. Um, and you look at it and you go, you know what? It's so difficult to get a successful cast iron repair. Don't mess with that little bubble, little piece of porosity. You're probably gonna cause more damage going back after it. So just leave it as is. Cast is so difficult anyway. You know, I don't like to put uh, cast projects into life safety items. Uh, so make sure that, that you've tested it, make sure that your wells look good before you do anything with it. Uh, this one here, this is the first cast iron that I've welded with this filler material. So it really was a life test. And you gotta imagine the manufacturer of this is putting himself at risk by saying, hey, try it. Uh, we're basically live, guys. There's, uh, there's no cuts to this. So uh, I just want you to know that it passes our initial test. We're going to do some more cast, but you need to know that this worked pretty good. Uh, and if you want to get information on this, we'll put it on the show notes so you can get a hold of this company. It's called Easy Weld TIG Wire. So thanks for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG.